here's my own op-ed this time, based on a decent amount of feedback regarding videos like these, and really my own work experience as well, especially as a workplace safety instructor. As a society, it's kind of uh, part of our culture. It's natural to hold the brave men and women who venture out on the oceans in high regard, and for good reason. It's also been part of our culture as society evolves to begin normalizing things like the need for seatbelts in cars, fire extinguishers in buildings, or accessible emergency exits, along with countless other topics that would have been completely taboo just a few decades ago. But when studying cases like the Northern Bell, it is striking to see how normalized these deaths still are. Like, someone's gotta do it, it's unavoidable. And while there is some truth to that due to the inherent dangers Mother Nature poses, a good thought experiment is to compare it to the inherent dangers of aviation and what commercial aviation has done with aircraft stability calculations. Even in cargo planes, not just those carrying passengers, or even extend that to the nature of space travel and those vehicles which have carried astronauts and cosmonauts for so many years now. These modes of transportation aren't without risk, of course, but it's unthinkable these days if errors in loading, lacking stability calculations, or years-long neglect and maintenance were to cause aerospace accidents. And when it does apply to commercial passengers, it's almost non-existent in modern times as one of the risk factors. This is intentional. Stability calculations go beyond being taken seriously now in aviation. They're simply part of the routine, fully embedded in the culture. Based on those calculations, you either have a go or no-go situation, simple as that. And the same goes for airframe maintenance, pre-flight checks, and so on. But when these incidents happen on the high seas and lives are lost, especially among seafarers, there's an almost superhuman-like idolization to it. Yes, these crews who go out in this line of work are incredibly brave. It's something I could never do personally, no doubt about it. This normalization of loss of life, though, on an industry-wide level, can help to sustain a culture of giving it all damn the consequences. A culture where the stigma was and sometimes still is, that is normalized to scoff at having a working knowledge of stability needs, to deride calculations, or to skip those steps of keeping a vessel and its occupants up to date on safety gear and or training. Pfft, they're heroes. Heroes don't need some stinking calculations. It's normalization in an industry that is thankfully getting better, albeit slowly. While in stark contrast, the rescue crews of the US Coast Guard who have literally signed up knowing full well, quote, you have to go out, but you don't have to come back. They are signed up to make the ultimate sacrifice should it come down to it. And yet, it is fully embedded in their culture and policies to perform stability calculations, train and safety procedures constantly, and keep their equipment in operational condition. Doesn't mean it's not dangerous, it very much is. But they're going out in the same conditions to not only keep themselves alive, they'll be prepared enough to keep themselves plus one, plus two, plus a whole group of others alive. The chances of survival can be increased. The men and women fishing on the high seas that make our seafood enjoyment possible, that sustain their local economies when there's literally no other commerce available, they are brave, there's no doubt about it. But I don't feel it makes them any less deserving of having their chances maximized within the limits of what's feasible to be able to return home safely to their loved ones.